Go for it. What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards, and welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. This podcast is on the allthingscomedy.com network. Uh, it's a dope podcast network. You go there, and you see podcasts from some of the top comics, not just only in the country, but in the world. Uh, Bill Burr is on there. He's got several podcasts. Burt Kreischer's on there. Tom Segura. Uh, Bobby Lee with Tiger, Tiger Lily. Is it Tiger Lily? I think it's Tiger Lily. And, Tiger uh, Belly. Tiger Belly. That's what it is. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was Tiger Lily. But yeah, Bobby Tiger Lee. Bobby, Bobby Lee, Tiger Lily. I, I know why I thought it was Tiger. I thought you, I almost said Tiger Belly. But <laughs> that's because of Bobby Lee's shape. But, uh, they, what were you yeah, they have a lot of flowers on their on their set, vibe. On their yeah. vibe, yeah. That's what it is. So check out Tiger Belly and just go there and see a host of podcasts from a bunch of other uh, comics and great podcasters. I uh, also want to thank the producer of the show from All Things Comedy, Aaron Brungard. Uh, thanks for hooking us up again week after week. And uh, our sponsor is onthevolleyapparel.com. You go to onthevolleyapparel.com and they have hoodies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, and tanks with soccer slash uh, hip-hop emblems, you know, on the front. So they got some dope ones. Go to the website and they have for men and women's and uh, use my promo code ComicRant and uh, you get 20% off. So go to onthevolleyapparel.com. And uh, one of my guests today is a comic from San Diego. You've seen him on the show before. And uh, he's a Chelsea fan. Uh, Give it up for Neil Chakravati. What up, Neil? Hey, good to be here. Good to be back. (laughs) Good to be back. So you're at work now? You guys go in? Because you're working. Well, I'm working from home, but every couple of weeks Uh on rotation, one person goes into you. And someone needs any support in the lab and stuff, work in engineering, so. Oh, they want a proof of yeah. life. Check. <laughs> yeah, so today was my day, but this is around lunchtime, so I'm cool. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, for everybody watching or listening, because you can yeah. hear the podcast on iTunes and on Art19 also, and you, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe, tell some friends. But uh, yeah. So the, the podcast is late this week because we had Champions League and I wanted to yep. cover that. And uh, it didn't make sense doing the podcast on Tuesday when we could just watch the games. Uh, so how was your week football-wise? It was, it was status quo. Like, <laughs> not, we, nothing disastrous happened. Nothing exciting happened. We just, you know, kept, kept things moving along. Fight you don't, to live another day, yeah. You don't think the tie with Southampton was kind of disastrous? No, because it was, disastrous, it? it was disastrous, but it was nothing new. Like, we, I think Chelsea fans right now have reached a stage where we've, like, you know, the seven stages of grief. Like, we're at that acceptance stage now with some of our uh, defenders, especially the keeper. So... We kind of like accept that shit's going to happen. So hopefully. Who do you guys blame? Well, um, I mean, I blame right now at this stage. I've moved Uh from blaming the keeper to the defenders because I'm like, you guys know who is there. Just play as if there is no keeper. You you guys have to be on your game 100%. (laughs) You, You have to be flawless. Like even if you make... You do ten, nine, nine things out of ten right. right. You do that one thing wrong, you're gonna have it's it's an immediate payback. So, yeah. but 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 I would blame uh, just the overall planning of the team. And then listen, right. like th- there's nothing really to blame. Like this is a process. Yeah. So if, if you accept uh, Lampard as if he like he's Klopp, then yeah, then you like, all right, this is the beginning of something. We're putting it together. Our forwards don't mesh with this league yet. That's going to take some time. But also, we didn't buy any defenders. And my thing for you guys is if, like, Liverpool built 
front from the front to the back right yeah. and uh they and uh, then they once they had the front all figured out they got the back straight and yeah. they became liverpool and you guys oh. are like look like you're on the same plan because you bought everything in the front last year and everybody was like oh man liverpool just bought the best team but and then it like the, the options in your front line and your midfield are so good everybody yeah. forgot how bad your defense was not just kepper yeah but i can't even to me christiansen is is your christiansen is your lingard <laughs> not, not Lingard. He's always good. Lind- Lindelof? Lindelof, yeah. Actually, that's very, uh, I think, uh, even when I think about it, something that analogy is so true because you see Christian mm-hmm. sometimes in games uh-huh. and you're like, yeah, this guy can be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. But then he's put under any amount of pressure, which is going to be, is this going to happen in the Premier League. When you put any amount of like physicality on him, he absolutely crumbles. Mm-hmm. So... I think there was this famous thing that Sari said that apparently he, Christians needs to visit that. This is the manager speaking, by the way. He said that Christians needs to, like, just before kickoff, he needs to visit the, the toilet a couple of times. <laughs> and, and that's not reassuring to hear about somebody who's supposed to be among the spine of the team, you know, if right. the team is actually doing well. Mm-hmm. So we've had these issues with, I, I think we, uh, just to come back, to work. I'm losing you uh, I, a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can. Yeah, so I think, you know, getting back to what you said about uh, Liverpool and the club, mm-hmm. that trajectory, I think there is a certain amount of panic because people don't want to look at that trajectory because of two primary things. One is that Klopp had a proven record as a manager before he came to Liverpool. We don't really know that yet about Lampard. And the other thing is that um, when Klopp came to Liverpool, Liverpool as a club really didn't have a lot of expectations because, I mean, they hadn't won the league in forever. They hadn't really won a trophy of any note for like 10, over 10 years. Over so, 10 years. Sure, Joe, yeah. you know, they won Champions League. They won Champions League, I think, in 2005. So, and Klopp came in 2016, so... You know, it's it's been eleven years. I don't but, think that. But but I don't think there was never Liverpool. There's always expectation at Liverpool. Not to win the league. I mean, yeah. what's happening right now is with a lot of Chelsea fans. They're getting anxious. Top four isn't good enough anymore for them. So, you know, I think the runway that Klopp had, I don't think that runway Lampard's gonna have from either the fans or the owners. So. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty positive because I see a lot of good things. I see even when you say about defensively, I do see improvements from last time. So I am pretty hopeful, but it's silly to talk about these improvements at this stage when you're still leaking goals. But, you know, I, uh, you know, you mentioned the fact that we bought people in attack. We actually bought defenders too. It's just that they haven't played or they haven't played together. Well, chill well. Chill well. Looked really good. He looked like he was picking yeah. grapes and stomping them and making wine and drinking it back there in the first yeah. half. And then yeah. the second half, all that space and time yeah. evaporated. Like Southampton said, nah, nah, no more chill well. So they dealt yeah. and adjusted to him pretty good. And the problem is, like you've been telling me that Zuma's a good defender. And to me, like if you yeah. think Zuma is your best defender, your whole defense is in trouble because, yeah, you. So Chilwell is the defender you bought, right? And yeah. you didn't. And Thiago Silva. It's too old. And three who else? Teams, he's out of three. So I what? mean, I know he's too old, but you know he's just played three games and he's got three clean sheets. So which three games did he play? I, I remember him giving away, making two mistakes. Yeah, that was uh, the first game. That was West Brom. But right. he played against Bansley. Okay, fine. Bansley's not a main... Uh, yeah, please don't uh, count that. But Crystal Palace and Sevilla yesterday. And uh, they barely had a chance in either okay. game, the opposition. Right. So, I mean, it's, 
it's definitely a work in progress but you know with silva coming back with chilwell doing well and zuma is getting a lot of attention this last game because of the mistake he made but i mean it was a bad back pass from zuma but it did reach the keeper yeah it for did some reach. reason uh-huh. for some reason the keeper the the player was far away he he just chose to slide and not do anything with the ball and the ball goes back Christensen, to his credit, does a great tackle and gives Kepa a second chance. And Kepa, instead of just, he can use his hands, right? The ball's right next to him. He's got a head start over the Southampton players. He chooses to go with his legs. And, you know, some people are saying that Zuma probably should have gotten back by then. I'm like, yeah, maybe. But That's how not- many more, ch- maybe he could have gotten back. But I can totally imagine what would have happened. Zuma would have gotten back. done something to give kepa a third chance and he would have still messed up so um, you I mean, you kind of have to do every single thing the pressure of you you'll see this team but you can't play a game like I, that's that sounds fine but every team needs their goalkeeper as a back let out a back pass they do it's just it's, it's impossible to play a game even if it's not like and that's not like the guy from Man City who can like make a pinpoint accurate pass way down the field to somebody you just need that goalkeeper who can at least clear the ball out you can't play with 10 men it's going to feel like it's practically a what you've been playing for over a season right now no you've yeah. been playing with 11 and the, the 11 has been making mistakes in the back the, so. the, the the 10 have been making mistakes and the 11th guy is I I think it's unprecedented for any top 6 team to have had somebody in a position in any position who is historically the worst that that league has ever seen. It just doesn't happen. That like you can go down the list of anybody from any team like you can look at even people like Lindelof you mentioned. Yeah, Lindelof is an average center back, but he's not the worst center back that has ever played in the Premier League. You look at Kepa by any barometer of measurement he consistently falls among the bottom of not just last season is that season, just last season across what, what all about seasons. the season before the, the season before season. he was average so the hope was okay fine this is his first uh, season in the, in a new league he's going to build from this but i think that was a kind of a lot of us kind of gave him a pass just because it was his first season and now we're seeing his true level which is no when you're good enough like he's made three individual mistakes leading to goals in three games typically that oh, i know it's, it's i know it's fun for us to watch like as a non chelsea <laughs> yeah. fan like yeah like and then, and I, i feel bad from at the same time like last week when that tragedy was happening that back pass and the way yeah. he dealt with it and i was like oh no come on kepa man i'm like i'm not even rooting for chelsea i'm rooting because I, i just feel bad for the dude but yeah even i feel bad for the dude i'm sure mental health you know we talk about that that that's something that we talk about so much it's inescapable right now for somebody like kepa like he must be calling carriers sure he yeah. must be calling carriers for support like how did you do this in but, a champions league but carriers yeah. had one such game no but <laughs> you, carriers now carriers was suspect before that They, they trust he me, Klopp didn't, but, Klopp, but he Klopp, was, Klopp didn't get rid of him because of one final. Karius been suspect. I, I watched him be suspect, and the goalkeeper they had before that him was suspect, and they went back and forth. I think it was Minule. Minule, something. yeah, but I'll yeah. tell you this. I'll take either Karius or Minule over Kepa right now. That oh, you would got, be well, you got Mendy. You got we Mendy. got Mendy, so hopefully we don't have to go down that route. And, um, of course, if we... don't just have mendy you know who our number 2 keeper is right now yeah uh it is check it is check yeah it is check he's back yeah you have the wrong smile on your face <laughs> how old is peter check i mean check? he's well he's younger than willy caballero he's a couple oh, yeah? of months younger than caballero but check's been out for just one season you know he's <laughs> he retired at the end of last season and i actually went back cuz nobody was seeing what he was doing in arsenal i went back and checked like He actually has clean sheet, save percentage, goal saved uh, that's comparable to the rest of the top six keepers. So Listen, I'm going to give you some advice. 
as a friend, I'm going to give you some advice. You could yeah. mention that a uh, check is signed with you and you can make jokes about it, but you can't have a confident, <laughs> hopeful look on your face because you no, got to the check. Let me finish. No. This is not a good thing for you to be uh, optimistic about having check as a goalkeeper. It's, it's a good thing relative to <laughs> what the other options are. I it's know it's not, not nobody wants not, somebody to come out of retirement. It's not good. But bro. if something happens to Mendy, I'd bet my house and check doing a better job than uh, either of the other two. You don't have any youth goalkeepers that would be better than yeah, that's a actually, better backup? Yeah, we, that's actually been one of the flaws in the Chelsea Academy. For a long time, we haven't produced a good goalkeeper or a good... Uh, any goalkeeper back there in the youth academy would be better than... Left back, Kepper. yeah. Yeah. Clearly not. Like our goalkeepers get, keep getting sent to loans that are not comparable to the kind of loans the other youth guys are going to. So, well, yeah, I don't think we have good goalkeepers back in the academy. I got to give props to Southampton. Uh, it's uh, Lee's yeah, team and Danny Ings. It scored. Kai Havertz is was a part of the yeah. problem and a part of the the, yeah. the the positivity. Like he finally got a goal. So the team of yeah. Werner got two. So those are two positives. Uh, Pulsic is back and played a part in at least one of the goals. And, uh, you know, he's, he's still not back to full speed yet. I mean, this is, this is going to be a season for you dudes. Like, uh, yeah. like uh, this is hard to ask fans to just let this play out. But it mm -hmm. is a let this play out scenario because you have a let this play out pieces with the coach. Yeah the brand new players, the goalkeeper situation, yeah. your, your defense. And it's just like a whole thing has to happen. And people say they're patient. Fans say they're patient, but they're obviously not. So um, I just get excited when I'm watching Growing Pains and people's, <laughs> people's overboard reaction to growing yeah. pain. Like people don't I want pimples. Agree. People yeah. want to be adults, but they don't want pimples. They just want to go straight yeah. to smooth face. No, you're going to have to have some pimples. Yeah. You're going to have to have pimples and go to school with them on your face. It's like, deal with it. And deal I think, uh, I think a lot of Chelsea fans have been spoiled by the fact that we had managed, we've had managers in the past who've come in and bang, they want something in the first yeah, but, year. Or but you had a team major. You had a team right. that was set that up don't realize. to yeah. win. And, and that team had just won. Then the coach yeah. had a bad season. Then he gets fired. And then you bring in a yeah. new coach. He brings one piece or two. Yeah. And then you, boom. Like, this had to yeah. be rebuilt. And yeah, it could be built uh, I mean, from I, the front. I agree. And, like, I don't even think we are playing that well going forward. Uh right now so far this season i don't think we've been we've been okay i don't think we've been special going forward but even at that level we've managed to score in five premier league games you've scored uh three or more goals in four of them yeah but so, then, you count, then you count the goals against <laughs> yeah but i'm saying like if you isolate if you look at how going forward we are playing Why i don't do even that? think we are playing that well no you're not we, we are not doing that well, but you're still managing to get a high output of goals. So I feel if we just, you know, get that link up between midfield and uh, defense, cut out those individual errors at the back, I think we can convert a lot of these draws into wins. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what every team is hoping to do. That's what Man U is hoping to do. You know, so, yeah. you, know you just got to see if, you know, Frank does it before he gets fired, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's bananas. Well, and I, then what, how did you feel about your yeah. champions league, uh, game? Again, that was another game where I think the one thing, you know, we were all looking forward to it. Yeah. Please, you know, somehow like, so they're, not, they're, they're no joke. Yeah. You know? They're tough. They, they, they beat United. They beat Inter Milan. They beat, they took they, they, Munich, couldn't by, beat by them Munich. In 90 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So, They're well put together. So the fact that we got a clean sheet, you know, in the background of all the defensive troubles we've had, 
I think was really good. We could have probably, we went in with a very conservative game plan. Mm-hmm. Very similar to the game plan we went in against uh, Liverpool. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, it just never changed. I think I, I thought like after 60 minutes when Ziyech came on, Pulisic started playing on the left-hand side, things are going to improve, but it actually didn't. We still were very conservative. Mm-hmm. So I guess which is fine, you know, I'll take a draw at this point, first game of the season, of the group stage against mm-hmm. the toughest opponent of the group stage. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really need three points this game as much as you'd need in some of the other games. Who you got next uh, week in Champions League? We got uh, Krasnodar, I, I hope I'm pronouncing Jesus, it right. Jesus, what the hell? What, what league? What the, <laughs> Russia. What, the, what type of give me games are these? <laughs> Who? What's we their need, name? We need a few of these. <laughs> That's no there. That's like this is just like playing in the League Cup in a in a dip. Wow. This is like a Europa League uh, name. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a, a a Caribou Cup name. This is this, this, <laughs> yeah this, yeah yeah. It's nothing. So we we got to play. Dortmund, I think we got to play or Leipzig or something like that. Leipzig, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you guys have Leipzig, yeah. So I, I was really happy with the clean sheet. I thought all five of our defenders, including the keeper, were really good yesterday, mm-hmm. and uh, that's really positive because I, we want to see that because I think that's the starting back five, uh-huh. and we want to <laughs> see more games with that back five. Mendy, right now, he's played three games, two clean sheets, and the third game against Martin's team, he was four minutes away from a clean sheet. So, Martin's you know, it's, it's looking positive. Mendy's start to the season is looking positive. And, um, yeah, let's see if we can build on that. Yeah, Fingers his, crossed, though. Like, yeah, his start to the future is looking positive because anybody's better than Kepa and Caballero. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll, yeah. We'll we need to see a lot more, though. Sample size is very less right now. Yeah. What did you think of the Everton Liverpool game this weekend? And Liverpool actually, also played in a yeah. Champions League, so we'll discuss that. I actually missed the game, but oh, yeah. I saw the. I have Liverpool friends who kept going on and on and on because there were so many things to go on and on and yes, on. Yes, there's so many things about this game. <laughs> so I saw the like, uh, like saw the game again and stuff, and I thought Liverpool had a good response to that 7-2 thrashing the previous week, right. uh, uh, two weeks back. And uh, they did most things right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they could have come out with three points, if not for a few things here and there. Um, yeah, oh, oh, like the goal being called, the winning goal being called offside by, yeah. ev- by okay. no one except yeah. the VAR <laughs> referee. Yeah. I, like I wrote afterwards that uh, or during the game, I said, I said Merseyside should be red, or I said Mervis, Merseyside would be red if the VAR booth wasn't blue. Yeah, because that was a terrible call. Like a lot of people are talking about the penalty, and yeah. uh, and uh, and and I said, yeah, it's. <laughs> I wonder how people in Everton or Everton fans <laughs> feel about their goalkeeper. Because he, he, he took out the best defender on their main rival yeah. for the season, even though he didn't do it intentionally. He also, yeah. so like, is he their player of the game? Because except for the Henderson thing, Pickford had an amazing game. Like he saved mm-hmm. like some really good goals. Like he had a, he had a Gordon Banks save on one mm-hmm. of those. And uh, mm-hmm. and he was to me he was the man of the match until the Henderson thing. But then the Henderson thing gets called back. So is he the man of the match or not? But uh, I I just still don't understand. So the offside, the last offside, right? I don't agree with the fact that they're going so much down to the millimeters because I feel there should be a, a like if you look at the tech. The camera isn't actually fast enough to capture the split instant where the foot, where the ball leaves the foot. Right. So I think you have to account for a margin of error there. 
and that, that, if it's within that margin of error, you give the advantage to the striker, to the oper- to the you know, the goal scoring team. I give it a goal. Yeah, that, uh, to me, it definitely was a goal. I mean, clearly, offside through those lines, you know how they draw, and it came. But they, but they were offside. like, but I didn't even get it with the lines because it's a foot versus a shoulder. Yeah, but I mean, I think the software has the ability to go down to the minute granularity and say which. Was, but my point is, it shouldn't have to go to that minute granularity. You know, there's a flaw in the tech. The tech, the cameras aren't fast enough to capture. But if they're uh, using the same flaw to judge everything, then I'm fine with it because it's close enough. No, because for something like goal line technology, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter because the line is static. With offside, the line is not static. The line at both ends, from when the pass is made to where the PP, the 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 mm-hmm. players are, are mm-hmm. dynamic. So if the camera can't catch the the there's obviously all this. No, I, I get that, but frame that they're gonna miss. If so. I just didn't feel like this was offside. I didn't see the offside. Like I literally did not see yeah. the offside. Like I, yeah. I didn't see where. Yeah, I I guess my point is that I there are gonna be offside that we have to accept that we won't see, but but of, we should uh, see it because they're showing it to see. us. No, because we can't make out a difference. If I put you know two strings of thread here. And can you tell me which one's more ahead of the other? And then that's a goal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So my point is when it's that close, you should give it a goal. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It should, have, it should have been a goal. There's no way. There, yeah. yeah. There's no but way. The way the rules, but the way the rules are right now, they can't give it a goal. So they, they, that needs a change in the rules. I don't know. This, this one just looks like a match-fixing call. Yeah. <laughs> <ask me. laughs> Well, it could be. So that's the thing. Since it's so close, mm-hmm. we can't even tell if there is something like that going on. Yeah, like, but it, normally they can convince me. Like, I'll be like, hey, this is really yeah. picky. Yeah. This is really yeah. picky. And they, they should just let this go. But all right. Mm-hmm. If just to be consistent, it's our side. This one, I didn't even really see it. Martin, we're and talking it, about yeah. the, the, what up, Martin? He just joined us. Hey, hey, hey. About, you're talking about the Liverpool. Uh, yeah, I've been offside. I've been listening for for a yeah. second. Uh, I only I apologize. I only have like ten minutes break, but I'll I'll try to make it as mm. uh, as productive as Let's possible. So you I'll won't. Just, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> I I didn't like the decision, and I didn't like I think horrific tackle from Pickford. There were some pundits saying that he should be banned as long as uh, Van Dijk is recovering from his injury. That's that's not going to be the crazy. case. Uh, no, it's yeah. it's actually it should be like that. I think you know because there was a reckless tackle, but it will never happen. But but it was a reckless tackle with no regard for the opponent, with no uh, consequences uh, being you know being here in consideration. So that's uh, so that's bad. Big but no, it was, it was a horrible. A red card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have he should have gotten a red card and two months yeah. ban for that at least. You know because that was reckless. That was dangerous. It's a very bad and negative precedent. I've seen a lot of memes. Uh, some yeah. of them very funny. There, I saw a cartoon where there are like five different variations where, where uh, Van Dyke is being shot uh, mm. with a gun and or he's stepped on by a dinosaur and they ask referee uh, about the decision and the referee is thinking, talking to the VAR and says, offside, no penalty. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's like people are making fun of it in a way, but it's a tragic situation that, uh, that kind of has a huge consequences for the league for this season because I think it evens out the field. I mean, if Liverpool were a heavy favorites uh, starting this season, but right now I think the field is kind of even and a couple of teams can take advantage of the situation. Yeah, well, that's well, let's I talk, think. Well, let's talk about it. A lot of people are saying that, but yeah, when you, I think Van Dyke was extra, was an extra thing that Liverpool had, right? Now, without Van Dyke, they're not even with the other teams, I feel like they're still ahead of the other teams. Like, when you look yeah. across the league, everybody's defense has been shit. The best yeah. teams, their defenses have been shit. Like, Liverpool lost to Villa 7-2 with Van Dijk in the defense, right? So, my, my thing about Liverpool is they still got Gomez, they still got Matip, two really good players, 
and you have Tiago. So you could drop for is it Fabinho? Yeah, you could Fabinho. drop. For, for, he's for been Fabinho great. Back. And he's who's been great. So to me, I feel like yeah. they had surplus, and this is where the surplus comes in handy. Like, but everybody else defense still is shit. So it's yeah. like I, I, I wouldn't even like the top the top contenders except for Everton. They've been just good on the whole. So it's just, you know, whether they can just keep that up because, because their defense has been, uh, to me, they haven't made a lot of glaring mistakes, but you got that Pickford back there. So it's yeah. like everybody is still, so it's like, how does, yeah, Van Dyke is huge. But, you know, if you, if, if, as soon as you get Allison back, you're good. Yeah. You uh. know? He was a commanding force in this defense. That, that's what you need in those times. You need this one commanding force, and the other teams are struggling with it, uh, including my Spurs, including your menu. I mean, Maguire that's, that's had a good game, but yeah, yeah, but, but, but that makes a huge difference in why terms Martin, of moving forward. Martin, why don't you just agree with me instead of act like you're going to disagree with me? And I agree with you, but thing, and say the agree, same thing Ian, as me. I agree with you on what you said, but I, I disagree on the impact level you know i think that the impact is actually bigger but martin of, i also i Dijk. also said that i said van dyke gives liverpool something extra now they just are just good being they're just good instead of extra you know what i mean like i still think their defense overall is still yeah. better than everybody else's in the league you know i agree i think and here, I mean, we, the... and here we disagree but but uh, <laughs> but it's fine mm -hmm. I, think I don't think they're, they're very good defensively let, this season. Let, let, I don't think they're very no, good defensively this season. That's what I said. Nobody's defense has been good. You, you agree with me again by disagreeing with me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I think Liverpool problems will be, will be more imminent moving forward. You know, so, so we will see. We'll see. We'll see. And then I think Neil was going to agree with me some more. So, <laughs> so now I want Neil to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I, I uh, you know, before... Uh, Van Dyke's injury. I was thinking about it, like the the. I think what Martin is saying that if Van Dyke was around, you could. It's Liverpool is far ahead and nobody can catch up. Mm -hmm. But with Van Dyke gone, it he they kind of pull him. Uh, you pull them back into the group more. But I still feel like the two big contenders for the league this season were Liverpool and Liverpool without Van Dyke. So <laughs> I, I I still feel they got this, and like who hmm. like let's talk about the contenders right for like who's there like City, City's no, defense. The, the, the best team is Spurs. Know? City's defense has gone Spurs. back hilarious. City's defense has gone back to the defense when when Pep first got there. Like they yeah. they got it's like I'm not their defense might end up being good. But those guys, there's so many of them, and they have to figure out how to play. They they got win back issues, you know. They yeah. they're 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 a mess. Like I've never seen a defense miss Otamendi so much. I thought I'd never say something like that. What were you gonna say, Martin? So here's my prediction. Uh huh. And you can you can you can play it back in uh, in June. Uh -huh. My prediction is it will go to the last uh, weekday. It will mm -hmm. go to the last week there, but it will be between Liverpool and Tottenham for the title. <laughs> so this is where it was all going to. <laughs> I like so, our team. I think it's a very good team. Let's have a good really chance. Is. Don't so get me wrong. So yeah, so yeah. Let's, so let's talk about your team. Let's talk about your team. Yeah. Your Europa League team. Yeah, playing right now. <laughs> playing right now. So you guys oh. played... Who did you play? Where, where is this? West thing? Ham. West Ham. West Ham. Ham. You they went won up, three nil. You went up. You won three nil, or so you thought. <laughs> and then your great team. What happened to your great team? Because they conceded three. Yeah, goals. that's a problem. Because I was like watching Chelsea and, and and thinking about you know making fun of Chelsea, and then it even it was even worse for uh, for Tottenham. <laughs> well, you know, listen, uh, it was a collapse. It was a collapse, and I was very upset about it for like two days. But now thinking actually about the potential of the team we have, and hopefully he will make adjustments, Mourinho, defensively. Uh, and he made obviously a very bad very bad substitutes. You know, like the substitutes were. Horrible. I told you that. Yeah. He's. Yeah. No, he's, I know. We agreed on that. He's, he's yeah. subbed it. He started, he, he was, is like Mourinho's good coaching versus Mourinho's bad coaching. 
started yeah. a great team. They went, they yeah. go up three. And then the exact subs he makes come back to hurt him. And if you credit a coach for putting in a sub that scores a winning goal, you have to, uh, you have to point out when he makes the substitutions that cause you three points. You know? It's characteristic, though, like from Jose Mourinho. Like you don't expect those kind of subs from Mourinho because he almost made an art form of bringing on John Obi Mikel to close out games. Uh, he brought you know, Harry Winks to close the game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like he, you know, bringing on somebody like Bale, and did he not bring on Lucas Moura too? Yeah, yeah. He did. So, and uh, and and Bale, who wasn't, he was clearly not ready. He was clearly not ready physically because he didn't defend. Yeah. And when you are up three nothing, you have to defend. I mean, he had a chance to score, and he should have scored. He did. It would be, yeah. It would be four two at the end instead of three three right. if he scored. Mm -hmm. But uh, but he wasn't ready uh, physically for this game. It was too soon. They should have put him up on for the last like three minutes, just three mm -hmm. minutes, two minutes, just to give him you know a chance to chance to make his official debut. But he wasn't ready. Wings was making mistakes, and suddenly when Do and Dumbella left the game. Uh, they were yeah. without this this guy uh, controlling and bossing the whole midfield, and and that's what Ndombele was doing. So credit to Mourinho for finally building up Ndombele, uh, yeah. and this credit for him to to subbing him. Yeah, like it's it's funny, or and beautiful to see Ndombele like having meetings in the documentary All or Nothing about playing time with the chairman and uh, Sissoko trying to help him. And now him and Sissoko are like the best parts of like uh, the midfield for, for Spurs. And I, those are two guys I like a lot. Like, and I didn't and Hoiberg. always... And Hoiberg. Hoiberg. Hoiberg has yeah. been so no, good. No, but yeah, but I'm just talking about the guys from the documentary before Hoiberg was... Hoiberg's been good, yeah. But, you know, it, you know a defensive midfielder, unless they're Conte, or Makaleli, like that. Hoiberg still hasn't, like, when I watched the naked game, captured me, you know. But I, 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 I admit that he's definitely doing something back there. But uh, yeah, he's it's, just, it's just, it's just, it's just great to see. Yeah, I think, I, I think, Mourinho's going to get the best out of Hoiberg because Hoiberg looks like a mess when he's on a team like Southampton, where if, even if he makes a good pass. His teammate loses it, so you associate, you know, you associate the teammate losing it with him losing it. But now he makes a pass, wins a ball, makes a pass. The ball is going somewhere, and so you associate the success of the team with like him making tackles back there. But it's yeah. it's just not the glamorous part of the game. But I guess he's doing a great job of it. But I'm 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 just I'm happy for Ndombele for a hundred percent. <laughs> the last thing yeah. before, unfortunately, I, I have to go. I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I like the team. There, there have to be some minor tweaks. Uh, I hope Mourinho will see who he can, you know, depend on, on who should be only used sporadically, like like Winks, like uh, even maybe mm -hmm. Mora. Mora kind of, you know, not really, not really doing much since 2019. He was really good in 2018, but since 2019, he's not really, really doing that much, except of this one game in Amsterdam, of course, you know, where he was the hero and he gave us the Champions League final. But there are better options with Bale coming in, hopefully Bale being Bale. Uh, him and Son will be our wings, you know, best wings. And then we have Kane, who is playing very well, seven assists already. I mean, it's incredible. I, but I told you a few weeks ago about Bale. I said, will Bale... Will Bale and will Mourinho accept that Bale might be better, like, assisting Son? And I think they've accepted the challenge. And yeah, then Kane. Be Kane, yeah. And then Kane is getting the goals, too. So that's, that's pretty dope. It's, it's pretty dangerous. But, again, you guys have as much defensive issues as anybody else. We do, although I like, I like Regulion as a left back. I think he's a huge upgrade over Davis. And unfortunately, Aurier, who played very well, made a mistake at the very last minute, giving us uh, giving the set piece for for West Ham that led to the goal. It was really stupid foul. He, sh he shouldn't have done that. It made no yeah. sense. He was controlling the ball, and he, and he let the guy come from behind and, and and go ahead of him, and he just kicked him. You know, that was that was really a, a mental lapse. That also in the documentary, Mourinho was telling Aurier in a famous scene that he's afraid that there there will be like <laughs> there's always. 
potential of one situation in the game that he will that he will do something ridiculous and and, and that was it and that well, Mar gave Marino knows piece. what he's talking about yeah so so Aurier even if he had two very good games for I would say 175 minutes uh, the whole game against United he was very good and most of the game against West Ham was he was very good Technically, his mistake led to the goal that cost us two points. So, mm -hmm. so I, I still think Doherty is, is the guy to go. He's less uh, explosive, but more solid, I think. Doherty or Dan Donker? Doherty. Do Do Doherty. Doherty. Oh, Doherty. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you a non-Spurs question. What do you think about the Man United 4-1 win over Newcastle? Okay. Uh, I think it was, it was your best game probably so far. Uh, definitely, a, definitely a comeback, mental, psychological comeback after you know losing to the Spurs one six. So that's definitely huge to go from from such a down point to to win at not an easy ground, you know, not an easy ground. And uh, I mean, United team is very interesting because if you guys become more consistent, you technically have all the tools to be to be good. Uh, with Telles, who is a very good uh, fullback. With uh, hopefully Pogba more engaged in better shape, with Fernandez pulling all the strings and uh, and hopefully Cavani do, doing good job as a center forward that I I thought was probably the biggest hole in the team not having like a typical yeah. center forward but now you do right but uh, uh that, uh, I think the center forward thing is overrated but uh, it's good to have both you know. Mm -hmm. you know because Liverpool doesn't kind of have a center forward the lead scorer is a plays on the right, you know? And uh, like, like, you know, it, there's, there's false nines now. Like, even with, you know, Ronaldo and Rooney used to play on the wings and get tons of goals. So, uh, I, I'm, you know, like last time we had a center forward, it's like Van Persie for sure, I think. And Berbatov, Berbatov before Van Persie. And, and yeah, but I said the last time, so yeah. So, it, yeah. it's just, it's just teams win with or without them, it's just, it's just, how how you 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 set up, but uh, I, I like uh, the funny thing is I'm gonna jump to the Champions League with Manu before if you if you gotta go go but uh, yeah. but uh, so <laughs> Manu fans are hilarious <laughs> like like the Champions League game I watched it and yeah if I'd you know if I'd have seen that lineup before the game, I would have been like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? Because <laughs> no Pogba. Yo, no, no Pogba. Yeah, yeah. And then I know there's fans that probably wanted to fire Ollie based on the lineup. Like, before mm. the game is played. And then he wins. And then we're like, all right, Team Ollie again. And it's like, yeah. guys, calm down. You, you just, you, you got to let this thing they'll, play they'll be back. Yeah. They'll be back. Yeah, that, that, like, you got to let this thing play out. It's like, even if it didn't work and we lost to PSG, right? There's a possibility if he played the lineup that everybody wanted, we'd have definitely lost to PSG. So it's yeah. like, like you, and it's a bold move and good coaching to talk to Pogba and say, we're not starting you. And then still, when he comes on the field, get He's something good. out of him, you know? Yeah. So, you know, like, yeah. you just got to give... Ali a chance like and th the main thing I'm giving Ali a chance for is not because ne mm. necessarily it is partly because of his coaching you know I feel like he can be better but I feel like the only way he's going to get better is in this job so I'm like yeah. all right let's let me ride this out but also I like the team that he built compared to the team that he inherited and that's mm. a good organizational thing that we do need for this team yeah. he's the closest thing to us having a director of football with just the plan that he has. His plan is our director of football. So, yeah. so I'm just enjoying and, and watching that. Yeah, we didn't get everything that we needed, but we still got shit that we needed during the yeah. transfer window. And uh, I like the way he put Tellez in there, his first game for Man United. He doesn't, he's not alone out there on a wing. He has like a wing back partner. Wing back, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then you put some guys. The team has been losing it in the midfield because the finesse players have not been playing, digging in. Yeah. So then you put Fred and 
McTominay, and McTominay played good in the Newcastle game. Like, I was, like, yeah. really impressed with him. So you, you have that energetic, physical back, two guys protecting. And then you pull one of the forwards, and then you could, mm. you know, you could do more in the, in the, in the midfields because, you know. You one could, Mata. Mata had such a good game. Yeah, I don't trust that, though. Yeah, yeah, I know, because, I mean, you can't yeah. at this point, at this age. But, uh, you know, if he can even do something like uh, an effective job as a squad player to give a rest to some of these guys, because Mason Greenwood isn't going to be able to play, play 30 games or start 30 games in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. He, you would need to take that load off some, at, at some point. Right. So, folks, like, I, I think... A large part of the question marks over United have been over what kind of a bench strength do you guys have? And the fact that you have, do you right now have Alex Telles fighting with Luke Shaw for that left back spot, which means one of them is, you know, essentially squad depth. Uh, the fact that you have Cavani in, if folks like Marta can raise their game, um, so you already have Donny van de Beek and, uh, it's essentially Van Der Beek and Pogba fighting for the same spot, right? Right. And then Van Der Beek could also play where Fernando is if he, Bruno's is, ever yeah. injured, yeah. Or you, could, right. or you could slide Pogba there if he's injured right. and then st- start Van Der Beek where Pogba's yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the game and uh, it seemed like a pretty... It Which one? seemed like the, a game the Newcastle that... The Newcastle the... game. Mm-hmm. Newcastle game. It seemed like a game that was destined to finish 1-1. Mm-hmm. For the longest time, I felt like that's what's going to happen. Uh-huh. And then suddenly in the last 10 minutes, uh, things absolutely changed. It, it looked like you could have actually ended up with 6-7 because mm-hmm. there were so many chances in those last 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, like I've always felt like under Oli, United does not create enough chances in open play. But I guess we are seeing with folks like Donny van der Beek as to, you know, what... Because to create chances in open play, you need to have a strong midfield. And uh, I guess, you know, what van der Beek is doing is... Because he's obviously, whenever he comes on, he's like, I want to prove myself because I'm not getting to start. I made this big money move. I'm barely getting to start. So... It's good to have these players who have that uh, fire under the under their ass, and because uh, otherwise you just have uh, folks who know they're gonna play every week, no matter what, and that's when the overall quality of the team team gets diluted. Right. So I think th- I hope like oh somebody at United has been looking at that creativity aspect and trying to rectify it. And if you guys can do stuff like you did at Newcastle, that's one way to... Because you know, Marshall, Rashford, even Greenwood, these guys will score goals. Yeah, exactly. You just need to... uh, They're they're good finishers, all of them. Yeah. Our our defense is the problem, but I think the defense is being blamed for mistakes that the midfield being weak yeah. in earlier games and putting the defense under pressure. So uh, I feel like, like when, I'm, when, when we're not playing good in games, it's in the midfield. And uh, so I'm hoping – so I, I like the changes that Solskjaer has made to players that are more confident yeah. and that are more like we want to win the ball back and control the game from the middle of the, the park. And so then we can get the ball to our forwards. So – and then uh, – we scored all the goals in that game. Marshall scored the equalizer for, for well, well, I'm, yeah. I'm mixing games up now. But it wasn't there own <laughs> goal, was wasn't there own goal in the Newcastle game too? Or, uh, am I, Luke am Shaw, I, am no. Am I bugging? Yeah, Luke Shaw. So it's like the last two Luke games Shaw. we played. There was a there was a own goal. So the last yeah. two games we scored all the goals. We scored all the goals in the Newcastle game, yeah. and we scored all the goals. <laughs> in the PSG game. So, yeah. <laughs> so we got to stop giving motherfuckers goals. That's what we need to do. <laughs> and uh, and you, you know the thing about the defense that you just said, that defense is making mistakes. Mm-hmm. I guess at this point, we got, kind of have to think about defenses 
and kind of to change our thinking from the league that we think we are in to the league that we are actually in right this is like even last season united had a good defensive record right and uh, this season let's go through all the top four teams of last season everybody's had problems defensively yeah uh spurs have had problems defensively i guess the only teams that are keeping it secure have been arsenal and everton and arsenal's only keeping it secure because they never do anything well villa yeah but let's not yeah yeah let's not go crazy here yeah yeah <laughs> well, i just want to give my boy a shout out <laughs> in defensively very secure but they've gone through now almost Three fourths of a season now with Mikel Arteta, and they are still, um, uh, you know, it, they always play every game on an even keel with the opposition, regardless of who the opposition is. Arsenal. So Arsenal, yeah, it's not like they're never dominating games, even when they are playing well. Mm-hmm. So I think when you're set like that, it's like you know how we were set up to play against uh, Sevilla. uh and we got a clean sheet out of that but arsenal's kind of played that way every game so yes they will get a get a win here and there because you know they have superman up, up top and uh, <laughs> but i don't i don't really know if that's a sustainable model through uh, which you can actually challenge for top 4 let alone the let alone the title I think Arsenal's going to get better as the season goes on. So I I just see a upward trajectory. <coughs> oh shit, I got it, yeah. bro. I got it. <laughs> you got the Rona? Down. Yeah, I got the Rona apparently. It's just two two just for, two wins in a week your body could not take it. Yeah, let me see <laughs> if I can I know. <laughs> I'm not used to it. Let me see if I can taste this tea. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Okay, yeah, in me Yeah, Your I'm immunity good, I'm system good. went for a toss. <laughs> right as <laughs> a coin toss. Right as you guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm glad I won the immunity coin toss. But uh yeah, also yeah. I mean they the games they've lost were against good teams, right? They good lost teams, to yeah. Liverpool and Man City. So and and barely to each So yeah. Yeah, you know, like but I I just feel like they're they they're, they're going to be stronger towards the end of the season and parte their defensive midfield the piece that they were definitely missing yeah. will come into play and uh you know we'll see I I think yeah you got to worry about them they're going to end the season they, strong. They they're playing right now and I was just seeing on Twitter people are saying that Partey is having a great game. So and Yeah, like Pate was the marquee signing of the summer, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's clear like he is the guy who can raise the levels in their in their midfield. Mm-hmm. And considering they already have a great goalkeeper, a great uh, striker up front, they they'll definitely uh, uh, trouble a lot of the teams that were in the mm-hmm. top four last season. Mm-hmm. But I still feel like the way they play is a lot of our teams are gonna uh gonna be ahead just for the inherent way the different styles of way uh you know uh, how our teams play versus versus the versus the way Arsenal plays. Like I've never seen a team which is among the conventional top 6 that goes through an entire season being outshot by the opponents that they play and Arsenal's kind of at that uh, ever since Arteta came along they've been at that uh, level like if they have six shots the opponent's always going to mm-hmm. have six shots too which typically yeah, even that's, under that's because it was yeah that's just so it's soft and that's why they want to get a guy like Partey so we'll see if that continues with yeah. Partey the longer Partey plays i mean that's true yeah. Arteta has been like it's going to change like kind of like patching together like some defensive midfielding builders yeah and uh now they have a real one and uh we'll see we'll see what happens uh yeah. just scroll 
we'll, ju- we'll just finish up the premiership and then go to the Champions what do you think about Everton? I know we spoke about Everton and Liverpool, but like, what you think this is for real? Like, they can, yeah, actually... yeah, why not? Yeah, it's yeah. Ancelotti, it's not a game, yeah. Like, yeah. and I've watched Everton for years. Like, you like last week, you weren't on when we did the predictions, and I think we all predicted, mm-hmm. or at least I think I predicted a tie. I'd have to go back and look, but I, I, I felt like this would be the most challenge that Everton would present to Liverpool since mm. I've been watching them. And they, mm. they figure out a way. They perform. They're always brave. They're always, like, fighting for the ball in all areas of the pitch. And they can strike. And they have one of the best coaches ever in, like, European football. Yeah. Carla Ancelotti is just simply cream of the crop. And the players are playing like that. And, uh, you know, you, you know you're a good team when you're like, you know what, Walcott, we don't need you. We're going to loan you back to the team we you got you from. You came yeah. from originally, not originally. Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. not Arsenal. So Arsenal, yeah. it's just they're just making decisive decisions over there. And they have players on their bench who started for them last year. So they have a good squad. And they added I... the perfect pieces. I, I kind of feel like that's going to be the... Weak link, weak link, you know, if they have to depend on their, on their squad. Because I was, I think it came out today, earlier today, that James Rodriguez was injured. Oh, yeah. So, you know, something like that, James, and we know how critical James has been for them so far. Right. Uh, I'm not sure if they have somebody back there who can fill in. Because, mm-hmm. you know, as you said, they have players who uh, were starting last season in their squad. Mm-hmm. Well, the team that started last season finished outside, finished close to 10th. Mm-hmm. So, there's not, uh, there's not a lot of quality back there. And they could really have a situation like Leicester last season where you have a great start. Mm-hmm. But then sometime around December, January, Ndidi gets injured, Vardy gets injured, Madison gets injured. Mm-hmm. And then the guys who are who are, you know, Coming back mm-hmm. are the true Everton level. Right. They're not the Everton level under Carlo Ancelotti. Yeah, but I think players are not playing for Everton. They're playing for Ancelotti, and the Ancelotti yeah. level is higher than the Everton level. So even the players yeah. that come back will play mm-hmm. at Ancelotti level, which is higher than Everton level. And the good thing you mentioned about the Hamas injury is yeah. because Ancelotti is your coach, if Hamas is yeah. injured now, and then they start thinking about that as an issue. The transfer window is in January. And yeah. in January, Ancelotti's like, hey, man, look what we did with one window. I need mm-hmm. more players. And Ancelotti, yeah. like normally, a lot of high top quality players would not come to Everton. But mm. because Neither of the start of Everton and Ancelotti, people are going to come to play for Ancelotti, not Everton. So he can draw in the transfer window some of the best yeah. players to cover for Hamas and improve the squad that would never normally come to Everton. So uh, that's yeah. why I think the whole year Everton is going to be a threat, no matter what. You know? Yeah. No, I agree. And uh, it's definitely a... We just have to see if the cracks start to appear, how they're going to react. And... Uh, because not a lot of their players are used to playing under, um, say they still are topping the team, uh, league in a month, right? Right. That's the pressure that a lot of this team is not used to. And you can right. say that about a lot of other teams, actually, except for Liverpool and Man City. No other team in the league right now is used to the pressure that comes with you're, you're top of the league beginning every match week and you're trying to defend there's some That's Chelsea it. players. There's some Chelsea players that are used to A that. few of them, like Silva, Aspilicueta, Kante. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess Zuma a little bit when he was like in his first in that Chelsea. But, mm-hmm. you know, very few. Like you compare to the guys that Liverpool and Man City have. I think that's the edge. Like, which is why I don't feel there are any other contenders. Um, because when it comes to those... Uh, but that's like players, saying, that's like saying, you know, you know, every, you know, Leicester dealt with that mm. in 2016. We just, 
and and you have a coach in Everton who's done this before, who can talk yeah. them and walk them through it, and he's got their air, you know. So it, 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 yeah, that might be a factor, but that's good coaching again to like experience coaching and be like, this is what we do when we're in this position. Now let's yeah. go, and Definitely. I'm the one that got you to this position. Let's do it. Keep listening. Follow. Yeah, Ancelotti, and uh, even um, I know Martin said about Spurs being in the title contention. They are. And it it yeah it, it it might happen because unlike Everton, Spurs actually have squad depth. They have good squad depth. They uh, you know, they have folks like Lucas Mora and Bergwijn who mm-hmm. can't get a game right now. Right. And um, uh, you know even. Uh, because they bought two fullbacks, <clears throat> so their right. fullbacks last season are on the bench, and uh, you know folks like Delhi Ali can can't get a game. Right. So yeah, that's that's pretty crazy when Delhi Ali is not even in the squad. In, he's in the squad, yeah. So um, I and you know with somebody like Mourinho who's gonna drill that mental toughness into you, mm-hmm. I think Spurs are gonna be a tough team to. Yeah. Uh, overcome this season. Yeah, they still have defensive issues though. There's they ha- they they have defenders that make mistakes, you know. Yeah. So that's the thing that you know that that's the thing that makes Liverpool better than everybody. You know. Yeah. Defense, yeah. even with Van Dijk gone. Uh, yeah. But the beauty of what Mourinho is doing with Deli Alley and putting mm-hmm. him on the bench or not putting him in the squad is yeah. Sometimes a coach. And Pep does this too. A coach does his best coaching by not picking a team player. But by not picking a player. <laughs> because if all the other players are, but this guy used to start all the time. Yeah. And it's it's almost like you bought a player to inspire your team by mm. picking a player that's normally a starter and taking him out the team. Because then everybody's like, oh shit, I better stay sharp. This dude ain't yeah. playing around. They did that to Deli Alley. Deli Alley used to start ahead of me. I'm <laughs> definitely, I'm going to be like practicing after practice. I'm going to be grinding when I'm on the field. I'm going to do everything this guy asks me because he don't give a fuck. He's ruthless. And he's, yeah. and, and it's like very transparent. And, it's, and it's, so Deli Alley might, not to the way he would want, but might be adding more to this team by being kept out of it by the coach. <laughs> You know, in an indirect way. You know, like I, like Solskjaer, like not starting Pogba is is big. Yeah. You know? I kind of have the same feeling in a slightly different way about Ross Barkley. <laughs> I, I feel he's going to help us a lot this season by not being in the Chelsea squad. <laughs> and being in the Aston Villa squad, taking uh-huh. points off. He's already... He, Played good parts in wins over Liverpool and uh-huh. <laughs> and um, who did they beat Leicester, which are teams which can hurt us on the league table. So right, that's right. six points. That's the most <laughs> Ross Barkley has ever won for Chelsea in three years. So, <laughs> well, he, well, he also won those points for Man U, and he also won those points for Spurs, and he also won yeah, those points. That's fine, but you know what? He can play against Man U and Spurs and do that same thing too. He cannot play against us. Oh yeah, he's uh, that's the lone rule. That's the deal. That's the lone rule. Yeah, Paris. that's the lone rule. <laughs> I feel like we've done some strategic stuff. Uh-huh. I think in the next uh, uh, month or so, we might have important players playing for mm-hmm. Aston uh, Aston Villa, Fulham, uh-huh. lost a streak. Mm-hmm. Sheffield United, Ethan Ampadu, West Bromwich Albion, uh, Conor Gallagher, uh-huh. and uh, somebody else. I'm forgetting. Oh, Crystal Palace, Mickey Batshuayi. If these guys can do a good job there, <laughs> when, that, they play, when they play you guys, they not they not play. But that's they can't play. <laughs> they can't play. That is They're so important. Play. They can't play. <laughs> yes, that is that is that that's a loophole <laughs> the league is not thinking about. Actually, it used to be a loophole even in the Champions League, uh-huh. but there was this occasion. Um, Chelsea were playing Atletico Madrid in the semi-finals of the 2014 Champions League. Uh-huh. And uh, they had in goal the best keeper in La Liga that season, Thibaut Courtois, yeah. who was on loan from us. 
Uh-huh. And uh, Chelsea actually tried to get UEFA to hmm. not let Alonso uh, play, <laughs> but they kind of kicked us back, saying nothing doing. <laughs> Our rules are not the same as the Premier League. <laughs> so, he still play. He played and he made some great saves. Uh-huh. And uh, you That's know, hilarious. he went on to the final. We did not. So. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, but. Yeah, I mean that's that's a scheme. Like not only is Chelsea making money loaning players out, yeah, but they but now they're making uh, they're they're hurting those loans yeah. help them for those teams and when they play those teams. Wow, that's bananas. I yeah, because suddenly now if Ross Barkley's integral to Aston Villa, uh-huh. when Aston Villa plays Chelsea, mm-hmm. it's like you know if you you, you had to play. If uh, Liverpool has, sorry, Aston Villa has to play without Grealish or Barkley, it's yeah. gonna affect them definitely. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, we need to some, loan Lingard and uh, Pereira. Well, Pereira's out is loaned out. We need to loan Ling- <laughs> Lingard out. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Aston Villa and Leicester, I mean, yeah. what do you think about this Villa team and what they're doing right now? Where they're at? I think they've already escaped relegation for starters. <laughs> yeah, they have one third. They have one third of the points that you would they need last to, yeah. to 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 to. You say you need thirty-five points to not get relegated. They yeah. have twelve already. Yeah. <laughs> so they're one third of the way there, maybe even a little bit more in four games. They might go. They might go top of the league this weekend because they play first. I think they play on Friday. So they might go top of the league for the first time in however many years. Yeah, since they and, won. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good. They play so they Leeds, have, so it's going to be tough. Yeah, they don't have eleven good players, but mm-hmm. they have enough to hurt. Like the good players they have, like a they have a great goalkeeper. It looks like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they. Why did you that. guys? I, I keep saying that. Why did you guys get them? <laughs> Because I, I think there were a lot of factors. Like, so Mendy, it seems like, was somebody who was targeted and specifically scouted by our longtime goalkeeping uh, coach, Christopher Lalichan and Peter Cech. So, uh-huh. he has obviously come with a certain... Did, did Cech uh, scout figure. himself to get yeah, back in? Yeah, that's what it team? seems like. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same Cech that scouted yeah. himself and put himself back on the roster. Yeah, well, you know, the, Peter Cech was... So Mendy comes from Rennes in the French league, and that's where Czech came from to Chelsea. Right. So obviously he has some connections there. This is a player that he's he's been looking out for. And one thing that's very clear is Mendy's strength. Nobody's saying he's a world class keeper, but a few things he's world class at is his cross collection and his command of the box, which is something which I think was a very big flaw in Jazz Chelsea with the previous keepers. So. Mm-hmm. I think it was very targeted. And right. also, you know, Mendy, uh, sorry, Emmy Martinez, Arsenal mm-hmm. sent him to Aston Villa. Right. I don't think it would have been that easy a deal if it was Chelsea who they had to sell to. I think we would have had to pay over the odds. Oh, and yeah. uh, when you already have somebody else who's scouted and with the larger sample size, for all Emmy Martinez's greatness over the last six months, He's only played top side football for six months and he's 27. So there is a little bit of a gamble element there. Uh, you know, so we see if there's somebody else who you're actually he, sure about. But he's, he's used to the, Marti- you're talking about Martinez, he's used to the Premier League. Yeah. Though. He's used to the Premier League, but only for six months, right? Like More, more than Mendy. I, I'm not saying, like, yeah, but Mendy's used to playing at least in a you know, senior football top league. And not being on the bench forever. Yeah, well, Villa made a so, good gamble because this gamble is working out so far. I think I think Martinez is great, and I yeah. would have not had a problem if Chelsea had bought it. I'm just saying I can think of certain reasons why, why? we right. either didn't look, or even if we had looked, this would not have been a deal that could have been uh, possible. Uh, yeah. Right. So they have that guy, and a keeper can make a big difference because mm-hmm. Liverpool had a lot of chances that game. Uh, you know so the uh, you know the game they played against uh, Leicester, they had mm-hmm. uh, chances. So a goalkeeper can help you a lot. Uh, they have Jack Grealish, 
they have Ollie Watkins, uh, Ross Barkley. These are all difference makers for a team like mm-hmm. Aston Villa. For a team like Aston Villa, like like yeah. like when I see Ross Barkley on Chelsea, I'll be like, yeah. man, he the team is an upgrade for him. But when I see him on <laughs> Villa, I said he's an upgrade for Villa, and uh, he's. You know, th- this is my issue with Ross Barkley. Like if he has a good season, right? Mm. He's he he's he took he took the trade or the loan because the Euros is coming up and he wants to play in the Euros. And it's like, yeah. if you play good for Villa, why didn't you do that all the time for Chelsea or for Everton, where you're originally from? He's like he's he's like the reason no, I, the reason I don't believe in Ross Barkley is mentally his mentality. Like I, I'm, I, I, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. The pressure Villa, at a top club is different. Also, I think even technically, what I've yeah, always but, but he wasn't that good at Barkley, Everton. <laughs> I think he started off great, and then he kind of like he had an injury. He fell off. I always feel with Barkley, the thing is, when he has time and space in midfield, he's great. But the moment like he's Who under pressure. <laughs> But the moment he has, he's under pressure, he kind of like, he always makes the wrong decision. Mm-hmm. I feel like Villa, because <coughs> you're, like when you're playing for a club like in the, at the top end of the table, you're either playing against low block teams who are not allowing you any space in the final third, or you're playing against opponents who actually have good players who can come at you and you'll not give you the time. I guess at Villa, he's playing against teams where it is more up and down, more open. And uh, that's why Barkley does great for us in FA Cups and League Cups, where you are playing against the second eleven of most teams. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, that's, why, that's why I don't trust him. And it, like, like yeah. even if he has a great year, I, I know the reason why he had a great year. It's like, why didn't you play like that all the time? Yeah. But... Good for good for him. Good that he's at Villa, and uh, Villa has a really strong midfield. Like when you look at their yeah. midfield, yeah, you know, like like you don't want to have to go up against this midfield. It's mm. Louise who has a year experience after coming from uh, City last year, and he played for them, and he yeah. had to acclimate. And uh, he, he he, you know. He's got a lot of potential there. McGinn, who's always been good, and he's coming back John from an McKinney. injury. Yeah. yeah. And then you have Grealish, who undoubtedly just slows down time when he gets yeah. the ball. Like, even if yeah. he's in a tight space, like, you could see him create time. He's like, he's, it's like he has a time machine on his goddamn wrist, and he's like, hey, I need four seconds to do what I got to do. And there's only a split second. Let me, I'm creating this right now. You have Barkley, yeah. Trezeguet, and then Ollie Watkins. I, I don't know if Ollie Watkins, it, it's funny, man. Like if he never scored another goal for, Villa, <laughs> for the rest of the season, I wouldn't even be surprised. I'd be like, oh yeah, that, yeah. that was, you know, this happens sometimes. And, you know, yeah. so, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see. But that, so I think Villa still needs a forward or something. Like a sure one, you know, one that they can mm. really count on. But a great win for them against Leicester. And Leicester didn't start like a lot of their players. Like, I think Vardy mm. wasn't out there. And Madison came in like he, he was yeah, a yeah. sub. So it, it's not like Villa got to face like a full Leicester squad. But that's football, you know. That's what Mourinho said. That's football. But Villa, uh, sorry, Leicester, the beat City 5-2. And I think mm-hmm. they've now lost to West Ham and to Leicester uh, and to Aston Villa. Yeah. You, you it's could a laugh. crazy league. It's, a, it's been a crazy it's a season. Crazy, it's a crazy season. <laughs> and you could like, Leicester, how did you lose to West Ham? But after how West Ham dealt with uh, Spurs, you're like, oh, Spurs. wait a minute. Mm. Maybe, you know, Leicester are not the Jekyll and Hyde team that they appear yeah. to be because Villa's at the top of the league. Or you're playing those teams when they're just getting into form. So yeah. this thing is definitely like a drink that's been sitting in the fridge and a lot of the ingredients are all over the place and some of the best ingredients are at the bottom. And you got to stir this league up and it won't be stirred up towards 
maybe three quarters of the way through. And then to, so you can know what the drink really tastes like and what this league really is right now. Yeah, you know, I, don't think, I don't think we have learned anything that we can use in some sort of like, you know, predicting how the league is going to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just been that. And, you know, a lot of times when we are talking about what happens with the whole COVID-19 situation, the mm-hmm. fact that the seasons were so back-to-back, they had barely any preseason. Mm-hmm. You're you're kind of seeing effects of that happening, mm-hmm. where uh, the same team looks completely different from week uh, day week one to week two to week three. Mm-hmm. So there's not a lot of consistency that any of the teams can boast of, maybe except Everton. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, it, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Another thing, another thing, like even Fulham, they got two players in at deadline that really, like when I was watching Fulham, like in the beginning of the season, like they could yeah. hold on to the ball, but they could not create. But now yeah. they got Loftus Cheek and then they got Lookman on loan from the German team, yeah. like yeah. Uh, who's had like, you know, a, a full season in the Bundesliga. And now you yeah. can see like where they can have some creativity. So, I still yeah. think they're going to be in trouble, but you know, they're. It's like it's funny. Like when we play Fulham, it won't be the Fulham that the the other teams in the league got to play in the first three, four games of the yeah. season. Like Fulham will be a little bit. I know. Because you believe Fulham. in lost this. I I I always yeah. believed in lost this Now yeah. he has a chance. Yeah. And uh, Lookman. I know, think he needed that uh, loan. I. He needed the loan for the simple reason that he was not going to get 90 right. minutes every week for Chelsea. He would have gotten game time, but he, the fact Squad that he's coming player. back from a, from a season and a half long injury, mm. he needs a whole lot of rotation in his legs to get right. back to the level he was before injury. Right. And uh, uh, another thing about Aston Villa, I think uh, people really haven't seen him play yet, but they also bought... Uh, from Leon, uh, Bertrand Traore, who uh, who is a right winger, who, and uh, who is this? Bertrand Traore. What team got him? Aston Villa. Right. Oh, okay. And uh, again, I think this was again a deadline day or like the last two three days of the window. Mm-hmm. An interesting thing about Bertrand Traore is he was the guy because of whom Chelsea had the transfer ban. Oh, like, the, young, the, the youth player that you guys... The tampered. youth player that we played and as a trialist, but we apparently played him in, an, in a game without registering him. Mm. So, yeah, he was with us for a good couple of years. We never could play him because he never had a... Yeah, I think he plays for Burkina Faso. And because of the visa rules, mm-hmm. he didn't have national team games enough to get a work permit. So we kept right. putting him out on loans and loans, and then he got frustrated, and he just, uh, I think we got decent money, 18 million for him. We sold him to mm-hmm. him. And, uh, but yeah, I think, so Aston Villa has a lot of tools at their disposal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we'll see. And their coach has a system, and I think he's getting mm-hmm. players that fit the system, they're not just sort of random pieces. And uh, you yeah. know, well, he's you know Dean Smith is going to prove or show, you know, the Premier League. So crazy! They are almost happened. relegated. Yeah. The only reason they didn't get relegated was Sheffield. A goal of Sheffield United was was uh, uh, was was, was the, the, the day disallowed. online technology wasn't working. Yeah. The, the exact. What if what if they're the Leicester of? <laughs> You know, wouldn't that be crazy? Everybody would feel stupid. Like Southgate would feel stupid because the guy you don't want to pick to start for England, his team, mm. even if they come second or third or get uh, like you have even to they get give, top six. Yeah, if they got top six, you have to be like, you can't ignore Grealish as much yeah. as you are. You know, like even in this game against Leicester, man, that th- his touches mm. were. Yeah sumptuous they were some beautiful yeah. like like it's, it's crazy yeah. his touches he man. is the magic player which, yeah uh, not a lot of teams have right now right uh yeah 
I was surprised though that he signed a new contract. I mean, I don't think we, I don't think we tried to get him. I mean, we, that's crazy too. So it's not like, like there was the rumor, and then they, yeah, they pushed up his price, and then mm. I don't think we even put a bid in, bro. So, I, like we we do these things like. Everything you see in the press is not, does, doesn't mean we <laughs> like we didn't bid for Sancho until the last week of the transfer <laughs> window. But the whole yeah. transfer window was just talk. But there never was a bid in, and we it never. It was Sancho transfer window. So what? It was a Sancho transfer window without a bid on Sancho. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't think we put a bid in, and then I don't think anybody else was like all the yeah. top teams had that position filled. And then, like, who was going to buy him? Was he going to go laterally to some other team? No, he's just, like, and if they promise him win a build around you, which they did, and he stayed, so good for him. That's a great leap of faith, but it looks like it's, it's working out. Yeah, it's working out. Uh, yeah. Wolves won a game against Leeds that Leeds kind of dominated, if you ask me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, but Wolves just pulled the Wolves. And, and, and got this win, but like normally, yeah, Wolves were like boss. Like Leeds had sixty-eight percent possession, mm. thirteen shots, even though only two of them were on target. But uh, Wolves pulled this off, man. You know what I really liked about that game? So Wolves but, were playing away, and mm. I the first thing I looked at, <laughs> opened the TV, and I was like. Okay, so they're owning it now. They're owning the Portuguese identity. Because yeah, they were the colors. playing in the Portuguese in colors. Yeah. In colors. Their, their third kit is yeah. Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. And they have so many Portuguese players. They have, yeah. We've always spoken about them as being the Portugal B team. And the, they, I think it was a really smart move of marketing by whoever was deciding. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you want to call us that? Let's own this. Yeah, I, when I was watching them play, you know, I said, does this count as a cap? <laughs> does this count as a Portuguese cap? Because yeah. <laughs> they are playing in Portugal colors for their third kid. So, and uh, I really enjoy watching like every game watching, even though he didn't do a lot this game, uh, Adama Traore. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel like the whole Spain national team looks so much better if Traore and Antu Fati are playing on either wing. Right. I hope, like, as you know, as football fans, we get to see more of that. I, I like, <laughs> like, Traore does this thing when he gets the ball. Like, he gets the ball and there's a pass. And he doesn't mm. take that pass. And so then he mm. makes his next touch more difficult for him than it should be. And then he gets out of that difficulty so effortlessly. You're yeah. like, I'm glad, he didn't, I'm glad he didn't make that first easy pass because yeah, yeah, yeah. what you just did, you just put yourself in difficulty and got out of it <laughs> easier than that first pass. So yeah, he, he yeah, does yeah. this thing. It's like, I, hey man, there's a pass. Nope. Take two, three people on, <laughs> then pass. And it doesn't slow yeah. down. The person who was open for the pass keeps running and still gets the ball. So yeah. it's still watching him grease up and play. Is I, I like yeah. watching a player get oiled up like a stripper <laughs> and then undressing the other team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty hilarious. Apparently, like, that that's to avoid people from grabbing his arms. Yeah, I don't even know if it's legal. Like, yeah. <laughs> to, to to baby oil stripper yourself, yeah. like you stripper your arms like their ass cheeks on a porno, <laughs> and then just just run out there. Yeah, I'm like, dude, you're so strong. Nobody's anyways getting anywhere near you. Like, yeah. what are you afraid of? But why grease down your arms when you have such pullable hair? It's just gonna grab your hair, bro. You don't. Those, that's not even your real hair. Those are braids. Take them out. Just be completely aerodynamic. Like, why do one thing and have another thing create another issue? It's like, 
Yeah, I just pull your hair, man. Fuck it. Well, his his biceps are the most non aerodynamic biceps of all time. Like they're yeah. you got huge. Yeah, horse, you got horse legs like for arms. Yeah. But uh, yeah. uh just talk. But about yeah, the wolves. Wolves are where are they on the table? Let me check. Are they because it's not been as great for them. I think sixth. they're around sixth or seventh. Yeah. Yeah, they got nine points. Yeah. They're, they're in there. You know, they're where we thought they would be. You know? mm, yeah. So. I thought they were a little below, but that's cool. So there's so many teams like within the nine to seven points. It's like, yeah, there's like 10 teams within two points. Yeah. Which is, ex- which is I guess, understandable for this stage of the season. Stage of the season, right. It's, it's, it's early still. Uh, I just want to go to Champions League a little bit because we got to bounce yeah. soon. Uh, so uh, we talked a little bit about Manu, but I just want to continue to give Solskjaer his full props for picking a team I would never have picked and delivering yeah. with that team. And not only delivering, but we, I was watching, I, 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 I saw, I think I watched the game twice. And I was like, People were like, we dominated them in the first half. But after like the first 20 minutes of the second half, we dominated them even more than we did in the first half to me. And mm. uh, the possession stats are like 61% to 39 in uh, PSG's favor. But uh, we just had shots on target. There were chances for shots that we didn't even take. And we just mm. looked better than PSG with Neymar, with Mbappe defensively and just the way we just played as a whole, like everybody was down. You know, there's so many times that Wampasaka came back to save someone. Sometimes Lindelof came back to save someone. Sometimes yeah. when Sabi and uh, the crosses from Tellez, like we getting crosses in the box from that side of the field, yeah. you know, and uh, just, and then the perfect timing of Pogba coming on and playing, you know, playing like, I hate that jersey that we have on third kit. <laughs> but you know what I like about it? Yeah. You know what I like about that jersey? Because Pogba thinks he's playing for Juventus in it. And uh, <laughs> plays like he's on Juventus in that jersey. So if that jersey is going to make Pogba feel like he's back at home in Italy, you know, yeah. where he won the Scudetto four times, then fuck it. Let him wear it every week and let's play in it. You know. But uh, yeah, I just think it was it was a proud game to watch as a Man U fan because of how we won. Is that how you're gonna be? I is that back three three at the back? How you're gonna set up for most games? For example, is that how you're gonna set up against uh, Chelsea on the weekend? I don't want to tell you because we're playing you. I don't want you to go call. <laughs> I don't know if you. What's, I don't know how connected you are with Frank, bro. I don't want to give no, up that secret. You'll, you'll see. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. No, but is that what they... Because <clears throat> I haven't watched every United game. Has the three at the back been preferred for most of the games? No, nah, no. Nah. Well, I think what we did is, is... Which is weird because I didn't... Maguire had a good game the last game. And I was thinking they should have... Even though he scored, you know in the last game against Newcastle, I thought that's yeah. the game we should have rested in. But this, uh, this is the game we chose to rest him. And, but uh, he rested, though. I don't know. I don't know if he was injured. Uh, or It's just weird. Like, I, like I could find out. I'm sure the news is out there. But it's just yeah. of all the games to rest your captain. <laughs> or like maybe you got a knock. But thank God for the knock. Maybe he's he not he, the captain anymore. Well, he shouldn't be. Like, I've never seen yeah. somebody handed the United captaincy so, so quickly quickly and easily without mm. proving it. Like, yeah. you, you captains have to prove themselves. And if anybody's proved himself sure. to be captain, is Bruno Fernandes. He's instantly yeah. a Manchester United captain. Like, from the first few games, oh, that, oh that's what a captain looks like. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. But now we've never played Shaw, Lindelof, and Twin Sabi in the back because Twin Sabi's been injured. 
So this is his first game of the season to come in mm -hmm. and do what he did. And, I, I, and they were, you know, PSG got some chances and we got lucky they weren't sharp. So, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, every team is giving up chances. Yeah. But they didn't capitalize on theirs and we did on one more than they did. Or all, of, all three goals we capitalized. Because <laughs> that third, their goal was our goal. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. And then knowing that you don't have to play three up front sometimes mm. is good. And uh, it's, it's just good because those people like McTominay and Fred have not looked good in games in the Project Restart. So yeah. for them to look good in a game like this, like gives the team just overall... Like, oh, so we do have a bench. We have a better bench than we thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's good to find out. And, that's, and when, when, you don't, when, when Man United fans, including me, have given up on our bench, Solskjaer uses it and proves we do have a bench. <laughs> so that's always a pleasant surprise, yeah. even though you don't want to feel like you don't have a bench. You just want to always mm. feel confident that you do. But, uh, yeah, we beat, we beat uh, PSG. And, and when I look at PSG, I'm like, do they really have a squad? behind mm. like after Neymar and Mbappe and Di Maria you look behind them and, and you're like you just I start doubting the team until I get mm. to Kayla Navas then I pick back mm. up optimism but like we Man United misses and regrets losing Herrera but to me Herrera it's just cute play, though. He's a good he player, but he's not. When you, Man United is like, we're trying to get the best of the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, but right now, and who then, you have in that and position? Then sell him to the best of the best. Then sell him to Real Madrid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Liverpool. I, I, Real Madrid would have never bought Herrera from us. Yeah, but uh, he would play though right now for you guys. As a Herrera. Yeah. But I wouldn't be like, I'd still be looking for somebody to replace him. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have been like, the, oh, he's no keen. He's no, he's not the, he's not yeah. that guy like that. You know, a good player for sure. A hundred percent. Real Madrid, you lose into Shakhtar Donetsk. That was the way Shakhtar, the first half, just did whatever they wanted to do with Real Madrid. People on Real Madrid were just yeah. watching the game. You know, they yeah, might as well. First half, it was just one team. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it, Shakhtar Dennis has, they were like, are we really playing Real Madrid? Is this what it's like to play them? This is easy. And apparently, they had 13 players of their squad, Shakhtar squad, out due to coronavirus. Yeah, their best players. So this, is not, this is not even yeah. a B team. It's a Shakhtar Dennis C team. Yeah, exactly. Because they have 13 players out. Right. And Real so, Madrid, go ahead. And Madrid just lost over the weekend, so they yep. should have been up for this. But, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't have a lot of things going either for them. Um, yeah, they, they got issues. They got issues. Like the people like Jovic, Luka Jovic is just not working out. That motherfucker was not yeah. interested in this game at all. Yeah. Well, he's just not worked out for them. They bought him for so much money last season. Right. And um, they bought Hazard for a lot of money too, but he hasn't worked out. But at least he's been injured. javik has been fit and not working out. I mean, so, listen, you spent so much money on two players that were going to, like, revamp. That with these players, Hazard and Jovic were the players that were going to, like, rejuvenate 200 million. Real, Real Madrid and put them back where... Yeah they were supposed to, where they were falling down from because players got old. You lost, you know, you, you, you're done with bail. First of all, you shouldn't have treated bail. You're just reaping the benefits. You're reaping <laughs> the punishment from how you treated bail. Are uh, you telling yeah. me bail couldn't play better than Jovic? Mm. Jovic, yeah. like, you know, that Rodrigo is playing better than bail. Like, <laughs> I don't even know who they have on that right hand side. Like I think they keep using a 
a mismatch of Asensio is playing better than Bale. Right. Playing on the right hand side, yeah. And I and I love Zidane. But yeah. So he has an ego. Yeah, and the ego got them three or four Champions League titles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's the Champions League also gonna look more and the thing is right now because of the compact nature of the season, mm-hmm. Champions League's gonna keep coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we we are gonna see some. Um, uh, I mean, there are not a lot of great games this round, but uh, I think coming few rounds we're gonna see some fireworks. Oh, yeah. What do you think of the Bayern Athletic Madrid result? Bayern winning four nothing, and just like shh, their chances, their chances weren't even easy chances. But the finishing yeah, so of those chances yeah. was just like beautiful. Atletico could have had two goals. Like if Suarez was more clinical, mm-hmm. they could have had two goals. Like when the game was still alive. Right. But uh, yeah, the Bayern's just been on this roller coaster. And then right now they're not even using their first level. Like folks like Kingsley Coleman were not getting a game last season to start. Um, they're only getting games due to injuries. And is, now, Davies, guys, is Davies injured? I think Davies has been rest- rested, though. Or like, yeah. That's I weird to rest. Injured. That's weird to rest a guy. Yeah, he's on, he was on the bench. Yeah. He did go in. Yeah. But it's like, it's weird yeah. to rest a guy. But, you know, he is 18. I'm not surprised if that an 18-year-old, no matter how good a season he's had. I, I feel you, but you is, just want to... Champions League, you death. just want to, you just want a quadruple. You ain't 18 no more. You in. Yeah. Like, what do you Yeah, resting? but like, no, but like if his form has been, has gone down, it seems like you know, there have been a few question marks on him this season. Celebrating too much? Yeah. What did happen? Yeah. Celebrated too much? He's got to get back. So he's got to get back in. There. Yeah. And they have folks like Lucas uh, Hernandez, right, who can take that spot. So mm-hmm. you can't, really rest and even though you have a great YouTube channel which Alfonso Davies has. Oh he does. He oh, can, nice. Yeah he and his girlfriend. His girlfriend plays for Paris Saint Germain. Oh shit. And, I, gotta, uh, I gotta look that up. They were both in the Champions League final oh, at man. the same time. Right. Yeah. I think both from the Vancouver Whitecaps oh, snap. Uh, academies. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you gotta focus on football, bro. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so here's here's something about and I started noticing this player last season for Bayern. Mm-hmm. Goretzka. Mm-hmm. He looks like Leon Goretzka. He looks like Gumby with a spine. And <laughs> which is still awkward. And I'm like, all right, it like What's his position? I'm thinking this dude is like a... Like a def- def- box to box. He gets so many goals. Well, it, like, it's not yeah, an accident yeah. anymore. At first, I was like, all right, so you get an odd goal out of him. But this guy, every time I see, like, this is unfair that this guy gets that many go- this many goals. And he's like, you, now I'm expecting this dude to score. And I'm like, just even more options for Bayern, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, if you see a guy named Goretzka, just the way he looks, walk on the field, you ain't expecting goals. You're expecting <laughs> a solid defensive mid. It's like if Hoof, who used to play for Chelsea, ended up on Leicester. Oh, Robert Hoof? Yeah. Yeah. Ended up, like, playing for Bayern and scoring. <laughs> You'd be like, how the fuck is Hoof scoring? Yeah. Well, Goretzka looks like this guy. And, like, a hoof is supposed to, like, be defensive, you know? Like, this motherfucker is, like, all like right lasers at the net. Yeah, like, he's not, I think he's been talked about for a while now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as this, there's a really good talent that was coming through the ranks mm-hmm. at Chalka. But uh, nobody really... Uh, it took a while for him to really catch everybody's attention. I think he's like, what, 
26 right now. Right. Um, so his senior career definitely didn't go, you know, it went through a lot of uh, dips. And, but now he's looking like this guy. He's almost unrecognizable to the player that he was before. And like even his physicality. Oh, yeah. He looks like he's ready for the UFC right now. He was a really lanky guy, lanky guy before. I, I, so, I feel like he's lanky now. But, no, but he's built like you look at some of his pictures and he got a lot of shirt off photos. Built up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he's balling. That's all I can say about that. Uh, Ajax <laughs> Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool played weird. Good game. And mm. it's a good game, but the subs were crazy. The subs were ballsy. Like, you're up <laughs> one. And you're up one. Uh, yeah. About 35 minutes in, an own goal. An own goal, which was like a pool shot because it ricocheted off three uh, Ajax players yeah. to hit the player that put the ball. It ricocheted off two Ajax players to hit the Ajax player that it, that it finally went in. But you're, yeah. you, you're making subs. You're taking out your, your front three pretty early in a game where if you take them out, and these guys score on you, you yeah. got to get another goal back. And you want the three points, don't you? Or the way he, he subbed it. I think they kind of played like they were okay with their draw away. Against, yeah, that's weird though. Against their... Uh, uh, you know, I, I got the feeling like after what has happened with Liverpool last couple of games, they were trying to like just get back to what they know they can do well. All right. And, uh, and, you know, not with, if that meant not taking any chances on Salah and Mane's fitness with the Premier League mm-hmm. in a few days, I right. think they were, they were willing to take those chances. And um, so we really don't know what is the level of somebody like Diego Jota, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Minamino. Maybe Klopp, Klopp knows something that we don't know. That, so, you know, that makes him actually trust them. Uh, to close out a Champions League uh, match against a team like Ajax away. Right. I mean, I would trust Jota. They could have, they, they could have lost. I mean, they could have yeah. lost or drawn because they had that clearance off the line from Fabinho. Oh, that was I great. Ajax, Ajax hit the bar. So, it could have easily gone either way. Yeah, and then you'd have been like, like killed for your substitutions. This is crazy. Substitutions with bananas. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like I want to trust those guys you put in. Like, I haven't seen Shakiri for an entire season, and you put him mm. in in a, just only one up against Ajax. Like, yeah, it was kind of weird. But they they pulled it off. They got the points. So some players. And I think for the defense too. Like they've had a tough time of late. Right. I think it is good to get such a game where they. Eventually, do keep a clean sheet. I mean, even that goal line clearance, the clearance was done by a defender, so mm-hmm. that would give them a lot of confidence. I mean, Adrian, another guy, right? Like he, he has those moments. I think he had a couple of moments this game too, where, like, if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be like, "Oh my God, here we go again." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian is pretty close to being Liverpool's keeper. I mean, yeah. It's just that, but he's a good shot stopper, though, in his defense. He just makes these dumb mistakes, but his shot stopping is actually pretty decent. Yeah, but so just don't let him do and make any decisions, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, and then Bayern looked good, not Bayern, Barcelona looked good against uh, a team I can't even pronounce, so I can't even really like rate this performance. Ferenc mm. Varos, Ferenc Varos. I don't even know what league this team is from. Uh, I've never, Barcelona. yeah, I never even heard it. What, what country is this? But then, like, I think they must have come through the qualifiers or something. It's so rare when there's a team in the league because the Champions League been around for a long. Well, you never heard. Hungarian, like that is yeah. banana. So. They lost this weekend in La Liga. They beat this team, but I'm like, mm. eh, 
It's <laughs> Ferenc Varos from the Hungarian League. So the team looked good. It's like they're from the Game of Thrones League, like yeah, it's a like league tw- that only exists in the pigment of imagination. <laughs> yeah. In George R. Martin's mind. That's, that's, the, that's the league they play in. Yeah, it's hilarious. So, yeah. All right, Barcelona, you won. And El, the, the, the thing is, this weekend in La Liga, they got Real Madrid, after two losses, has to play Barcelona in El Clasico this weekend. So, but didn't Barcelona lose too? Yeah, they lost this the weekend. Game, but they, at the least they it. got a win. Like, oh, yeah. like Real Madrid should have got a win in Champions League. Barcelona did. But Barcelona going oh, yeah. into the, the game at least with a, with a win in the last two games. Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they're more motivated. And Ramos, maybe yeah, yeah. Ramos will play. And uh, I know Hazard is injured. So it's, it's a mess over there right now at Real Madrid. Yeah. It's a straight up mess. Yeah. And then Inter tied with 2 2 with Muchum Gladback. I think uh, yeah. your Come boy. On. Lukaku got two. Lukaku. Yeah. Yep. Good goals, both striker goals. Yeah. One poaching, one from just outside the six yard box. I mean, Lukaku, I really like the fact that he has not lost focus. Has You know, he got a lot of, he was under a lot of pressure when the United thing was not working out. And it seems like under Conte, he's found a coach where who can use his strengths and weaknesses in a way that can turn him into a you know, consistent goal scorer like mm-hmm. he was at Everton. Right. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Man City uh, went, went behind against Porto mm-hmm. but they came back to win 3-1. Yeah, so they dug um, that out. They dug that out. I think Ruben Diaz made a mistake on that first goal but then he had mm-hmm. a good game after that. Right. And so, then his namesake put the ball in the back of the net. Luis Diaz, yeah. Yeah, Luis Diaz. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I still don't believe in their defense. Like, you know, you should be I I'm not brushing over Porto, but that's just an ex mm. like that happens in a in a Premier League game, you might not Yeah. You, you might drop points. Come back. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you 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 might drop points. So you know, a good Man City defense doesn't make those type of mistakes and they, they're making them in the league and in the Champions League. So they're, they're a mess in the back too. Yeah, which uh, is why I still feel like it's Liverpool's title to lose. Yeah, yeah, you for know? sure. Because they, they have the best solid defense, yeah. you know, yeah. with or without Van Dyke. And yeah. they have possibilities to of replacing yeah. If they go even yeah. another injury in the back, they still can, you know. I think they're going to go by... Uh, uh, they're gonna pay good money for a center back in January, though. Right, right, and then they can do that. They have that option too. You know? Yeah, because with I... Van Dyke, this is an ACL. It might mean uh, a good year, year and a half. Yeah. For him to get back to say a year of to where he was the injury, and then you know the, because it's one of the toughest injuries for a player to get back from, and right. even mentally, even though he is world class. Right. I don't know. Like, I'm sure Klopp is thinking about, let me cover my bases now for the worst case scenario. Right. Yeah, they could get a Panacampo, which is a player that a we were trying to yeah. get. Yeah. I think they're going to go for him. He has like a 40 million, 50 million release class. That's, that's in their price range. Yeah. Yeah, so they could do that. Yeah. Uh, just I want to go back to the league this week before we could close it out. Manchester mm. United versus Chelsea. Chelsea's your team, Man United's mm. my team. What do you think are your chances? I think it's going to be, I think both teams start on a pretty equal keel. Like going by form, United's coming off two wins. Mm. We are coming off two draws. So maybe United <laughs> has a slight edge there because, you know, all your players are going to be in. They're going to feel confident. Mm. We still have so many question marks among each other. Right. And, uh, I think last game was the first time that all our signings played, the new signings played in the second half together. So we're still pretty fresh in the kind of things that we're trying to achieve. But if we play the back five that played against Sevilla, I'll feel a lot more confident of, you know, 
doing things going forward. I think Lampard's been making a few mistakes in the way that he's setting up our front three. Mm-hmm. But we're still getting a lot of goals. So I feel like if he actually, uh, I'm sure it's tactical. He's doing it for a reason. It's not that obvious. You know, when you, when you're sitting in front of the TV watching, but mm-hmm. I think if he makes those changes, if somebody like Giesh can actually start, because there's been mixed signals. Like he's fit, but he's not fit enough to play 90 minutes. Right. So, but if he can at least start, I think he'll have more of a chance. Um, and we know what the weaknesses United have, but then United also knows the weaknesses that Chelsea have. I think both teams. It's going to be interesting because the weaknesses in both teams are in defense. But I don't think either team right now is mm-hmm. confident enough to start from minute one, you know, and go for it, really go for it, to take advantage of those weaknesses. Right. So maybe our defenses will actually escape just because the other team is not confident enough to you know, right. go, for the, go for the gamble. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping Man United are slowly getting into form and then this is another improved performance on the other two and we're going to continue yeah. in the right direction. I think shots have been fired at certain players by mm. who uh, Solskjaer has decided to start in the last few games and if you don't have your shit together, you won't play. And if you get a chance to play, you better be impressive yeah. so you can keep playing. So there's that vibe going on, which is a good vibe to have because, you know, McTominay has stepped up and Fred is, Fred is like, Fred will win the ball, but what is Fred going to do with the ball after he wins it? Is he going to give it right back or is he going to pass it to a teammate? So, Mm. you know, but, you know, Matic is getting rest and he's always good rested. Uh, You know, Pogba, Mm. I just don't think he's fit. So playing him at the right point of the game is important. And, uh, Mm. you know, I hope he, you know, I don't know if Maguire is going to play. So, Marshall's Marshall's still out? Yeah, because this would be the first game. Second second game, I guess. Yeah, second game he's out. So, he's not in. But you have Cavani, you got Greenwood, you you know, unless Cavani Cavani is still disqualified. I think he might be, because of when we bought him, he might still be disqualified from playing yet. So I'm not sure because let me see if Cavani is gonna yeah let's see if he's available. Hey, Ian, sorry to break in, but uh, oh, you got you got a bounce. Yeah, my other show's yeah, yeah. here. All right, cool. Oh, okay. Cool. All right, yeah. So we we're gonna wrap it. I'm unsure about the Chelsea Man U game. Mm-hmm. I hope we win, but we'll see what's up. Uh, so Neil, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Is there anyone to close no with? Because we got to no, roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think we should roll. Yeah, let's hope next week we can talk about a good game. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, I hope that too. So it's sentiment <laughs> shared. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks, Aaron Brungard, for helping us put this together. Thanks, Mark, for coming in for a little amount of time that you could. Enjoy the football this weekend. It's coming thick and fast. There's games on the week, on the weekend, and Champions League midweek. So enjoy, love yourselves, be careful, be good. See you or talk to you next week. One.